Welcome to the show. We have a very special guest today by the name of Mario Cruz. Mario is going to talk to us about the Bay Area's newest website. Now remember, you can watch our show on Sundays on Channel 29 at 3 o'clock p.m. You may also log into YouTube and Facebook. So please, let us welcome Mario. Hola. How are you doing? Well, we're doing pretty good. We're excited. We have you here, one of the greatest entrepreneurs in the San Francisco Bay Area. <laughs> I slipped her $20 for that. Uh, thanks for having me, and thanks for um, having uh, LatinoFresh.com. We are the Bay Area's new Latino website, and um, we are about events, entertainment, culture, and my favorite, empowerment. Now, yes. my favorite word, empowerment? Now, to me, that sounds a little bit like you're a politician. <laughs> no. Um, you know, the reason, um, well, I, I think the reason why I was born on this earth, on this earth is to empower um, the Latino community. And I think I got that from my dad, um, who used to be a church leader. Um, you know, back in the day, uh, most of the Catholic churches in San Francisco would have Latino clubs. And then after the church, uh, People would go downstairs to a room with their pan, you know, uh, Mexicano, Mexican bread and coffee. And just it was a great community builder. And, I, and one year my dad was a, um, a leader. And I, I guess I was just awed on how he captured the audience. But really how our community, our Latino community especially, really needs a lot of guidance right now. So, Mario, you do hail from San Francisco yourself. You were born and raised here. And... Your great new project has been in the making probably in the back of your mind for quite a while. Yeah, you know, uh, Latino Fresh started, uh, we launched it October 7th, but that wasn't my first Latino website. Uh, my first one was in 2000. I started a website called LatinBayArea.com, and I think people still remember that name. Um, started in 2000 and ran it for about 10 years. Um, and at one point, it was the largest Latino website in the, in, in the West Coast. Um, and we had a lot of fun with that. Um, took a sabbatical, went to Mexico, learned more about my culture, and um, came back with a yearning of, you know, I really want to keep uh, empowering the Latino community. And so, um, you know, a couple of years ago, I started on this project, and we launched, um, you know, last week, uh, latinofresh.com. And latinofresh.com, like I said before, it's events, entertainment, culture, and empowerment. And what we do is every, it's a weekly mag uh, magazine website. Um, and it's, uh, we try to put about 100 posts every week, uh, again, on you know, events and entertainment and culture and, of course, my favorite empowerment. You know, the Bay Area, as you know, has a lot of great Latino events. I mean, with Dia de los Muertos now, I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, and just Latino Fresh is not for the Latino community. It's for anyone that loves Latino culture. And, you know, as you know, our Latino culture is pretty popular. Um, and, uh, and so that's what we try to do with latinofresh.com every week. Um, put out great stuff that people would love to see about their culture. Uh, Dia de los Muertos, we have our page up right now. And there is close to 40 Bay Area events that are just Dia de los Muertos. And for people that don't know what Dia de los Muertos is, it's kind of like a Latino version of Halloween, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. So, Mario, when and how did you start to realize your mission in life? Because you're very passionate about this project. I, I am passionate about empowering the Latino community and just Latino culture uh, overall in the Bay Area. Um, again, I think it's from my dad, uh, just seeing him at a, you know, at a, at a community uh, church meeting and, and all that kind of stuff. And in the high school, I was um, president of Latino Club. And after that, I got involved in Latino media, um, radio and, and uh, newspaper and community organizations. Um, I think the passion uh, started coming up when I worked at Mecca 
which back in the day, they did the San Francisco Carnival for the city of San Francisco. And we all know about Carnival. It's one of the biggest events in the Bay Area. It's actually the biggest multicultural event in the West Coast. So that was a lot of fun to be part of. I did marketing for that, bringing in sponsors. Um, and it was also a lot of fun to work under uh, Roberto Hernandez. He was the executive director of Mecca, uh, and everybody in our Latino community knows about Roberto Hernandez, a uh, great leader, a uh, great person. And um, so I really learned a lot from Roberto uh, working at Mecca. Uh, he, at one point, he was like a guru to me, and, we'll, and, and I'll share with you the other gurus, but it was, a, I think, working at Mecca really opened my eyes up to number one, become part of Latino media, and number two, empower the Latino community. Well, we all do know Roberto's good hard work in the mission, and uh, so let me ask you a little bit about your interviews that you do with famous people, and uh, I also saw a bit of an article on Hillary Clinton. You know, with LatinoFresh.com, what we want to do is, <laughs> forgive the pun, is give you fresh uh, Latino information. And uh, we saw the Hillary thing come out. Uh, of course, everybody knew she was uh, going to run for president and, and how devoted she is for the Latino community. So we did an article on that, and uh, she says that she loves being La Hillary lie Hillary for the Latinos. So we thought that was uh, a nice uh, article to do for Latino Fresh. And, um, and you know, as you know, every politician now is going to try to pander to our Latino community. And it's going to be very entertaining for the next uh, couple months. <laughs> and just to go along with what you're saying, it's very refreshing to see that the politicians are pandering to our community. And uh, I guess her tagline said, estoy contigo, right? Yeah, she says, estoy contigo, and uh, that's going to be, I, I think uh, she's going to place a lot of importance to our Latino community across this nation. So uh, go Hillary, and go, you know, any other politician that uh, really uh, cares about the Latino community. And let's talk a little bit more about the voting and the statistics and how we are now the largest uh, minority majority in California. Uh, is there anything that you might yeah. want to share with our audience about that topic? Great. Yes, a great question with voting. Um, I was invited to Voto Latino uh, last week. Um, it was They did their power summit uh, in Stanford, which was really interesting. Voto Latino um, is started by Rosario Dawson, which was really, really cool. And it's, it's executive uh, led by uh, Maria Teresa Kumar. And that's an interesting story because she pretty much uh, left her whole home just to start uh, with Rosario on this thing to empower the Latino community by using our voting power. So um, in Voto Latino, it was really interesting. Uh, I've learned a couple of things. Number one, um, the general uh, voting, the general market votes uh, about 70 percent, right? Latinos only come out with 50%. So we're talking about eligible voting here. And so that's a reason why Voto Latino and other organizations are out there. They're, because the numbers of Latinos in this country, they're powerful, they're huge. But the challenge that we have is a lot or half of Latino voters don't vote. So I was very happy to attend uh, uh, the Voto Latino uh, Summit in, St in Stanford. Um, there were also uh, the ex-mayor, L.A., Antonio Vieira Sagosa, and I interviewed him. You can check out the interview on latinofresh.com. And it looks like we may have our next Latino California governor. <laughs> yes, and that's exciting for all of us to hear, those of us that have been in the political arena for a very, very long time. I have met Antonio, and I've also, I'm also familiar with Loretta Sanchez running for the uh, Barbara Boxer seat has not been, uh, that'll be in the spring. But uh, just to get back a little bit more on the politics, um, as you mentioned, we have a lot of Latinos and we have issues getting ourselves to the polls. Is there anything that you're su you could suggest that would 
invigorate our communities to get to the polls? That's a great question, Paula. Um, you know, I think that's a $64,000 question for our Latino community right now, is to get our Latinos to register to vote, and not only register to vote, to, to actually show up and vote, either by email or, or, or on the day of voting. Um, great question. I, I, I think there's organizations like Voto Latino um, with Rosario Dawson and also Wilmer Valderrama is also part of it and other great Latino celebrities. We do need uh, to get our Latinos to step up and vote and register um, because it's an exciting time for our Latino community right now. Well, we also need to get uh, our own Latinos to run for office because when we run, we win. And you can see that happening in San Francisco. And you're going to see more and more of our Latinos not just getting to the polls to vote, but also participating in the campaigns. So that uh, when you talk about Antonio Villaraigosa, as you and I know, uh, he has been what I would call a, a model to follow and a model to be able to get us to the polls. And so what I want to ask now for you is, as you were growing up in San Francisco, you've seen a lot of changes go on here. Can you tell us how politically you have seen uh, changes improve or not improve so much in San Francisco? Well, yeah, I've been in San Francisco for 51 years and very proud to be a San Francisco native. Um, you know, of course, San Francisco has changed um, and uh, it's become gentrified, uh, especially in my neighborhood, the Mission District. Everybody knows about that, how hotly contested that is. You know, my thing is that if other neighborhoods were to happen, you know, like Chinatown to Japantown were to be homogenized or gentrified, what's going on in the Mission District, you know, there would be like protests and uproars, uproars all the time. But, you know, it's the Latino community, you know, is this a community you can step on? Definitely not. But I don't know where all the uproars and protests are. Again, you know, if you had North Beach, Japantown, Chinatown, you know, Russian uh, uh, Hill or the Russian Village, um, and all these other um, uh, great San Francisco institution neighborhoods, if they were being... Um, you know, gentrified, you would think they would, they definitely would get a lot of media attention. Um, I think the Mission District uh, being overrun by the techies, you know, it's, 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 it's not good for any neighborhood to lose its heritage because the United States is built on different heritage. It's built on immigrants, right? It's built on culture. That's why it's so beautiful to come to the United States because you can pretty much, or San Francisco, because you can pretty much see all the cultures in this city. That's why I love San Francisco and I love living here. We are very international. And uh, as you were talking about the Mission District being gentrified, we did have uh, someone here, Christina Olagi, the former supervisor, talking about the uh, Prop I initiative that would put a pause into the system to be able to take a look at everything that's going on in that area. But uh, to get back to the political question as to what we can do to motivate, particularly our young people, the same demographic that you're targeting for Latin Fresh, isn't that also the same demographic age group that we want to get to the polls? Yes, you know, um, the Latino community in this country, as you know, is the youngest demographic, right? General market is about 39, 37 years old. The median age for the Latino community in this country is 27 years old. Um, so it's, we're a, a young community, um, and it's why we are developing latinofresh.com to go after this young community. Um, and part of that is the empowerment process. And, you know, we will be talking a lot about voting and getting people to vote. So hopefully our goal with latinofresh.com under the empowerment umbrella would be the voting process. And also uh, in the briefing, we talked a little bit about some of the other areas and some advice to our young people. So what kind of... Uh, advice would you have for our young people that would help them with uh, their life? Oh, yes, I'd love to talk about this. And that's, you know, to me, the secret of life is waking up every day and doing your passion, right? 
Now, the hardest part is finding what that passion is. And you and I talked about that. Uh, my passion in life is to empower the Latino community. But in order for somebody to find their passion in life, um, there's a couple questions I usually ask them. One is, what would be your most favorite job to have in the world or organization? The dream job. Yeah, the dream job. You know, what organization, what part of the planet, you know, what position would you love to have? You know, if you can answer that, great. Then you know your passion in life. You know why you're born in this, in this earth, you know? Um, I have another question, and the other question would be, what would you do if you were to win the $100 million lottery? And, of course, this is after you travel the world many, many times, and this is uh, you've given all your loved ones material things like cars and houses, and also after you, you've met all your uh, uh, contributions, your charities, right? Now... And gone through your bucket list. Yeah, you, yeah your bucket list, exactly, right? Now, magically you still have $100 million in your account. My question is, now what would you do? So to me, those are the top two questions I think everyone should ask in their life to find your passion in life. Because, you know, we're all, we're all snowflakes, right? We're all born with different qualities, yes? And if you can find what your DNA, what your quality is, your snowflake, I'll tell you, waking up every day and doing your passion is just a great way of living life. That's very good advice, Mario. Now, let's get back to the greatest Latino website that's ever hit the airwaves. And we want to talk a little bit about why this website is different from the others. So latinofresh.com is a local website. You know, there are a lot of national websites out there that are Latino. And uh, the problem I have with them is that they're all national regurgitations, meaning they all talk about the Pope or Sofia Vergara or Shakira, you know, or whatever. It's all the same thing. And the sad part is that most of this national regurgitation comes from the East Coast, right? We're in the yeah, West. Those East Coasters. <laughs> well, they're very, um, you know, ambitious out there, and they do a lot of great things. But majority of our Latino community in this country is the West Coast, California and Texas. That's right. We're all out here. And um, there are very, very few Latino websites that cater to the West Coast. So, you know, we could have either done a national Latino website or local uh, Latino website. I decided to do a local Latino website because local information is better. It's 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 way better. Um, well, all politics are local. Didn't one of our great people say that? Hmm, interesting. Uh, a thing that I say is content is king and local content is King Kong. Oh, I like that one. <laughs> I like that one better. <laughs> so locally what we do is, as I said bef before, we post on a weekly basis 100 events, entertainment, culture, and empowerment. Those are the four um, f uh, breakdowns of what Latino Fresh is. So if you want to find out what's going on in the Bay Area, that's Latino. Um, go to latinofresh.com. Uh, check out our events can calendar. You'll see art exhibits. You'll see Dia de los Muertos events. You'll see concerts. You'll see literature. You'll see politics. And, of course, you'll see nightclubs dancing because, you know, our Latino culture, we love to dance. Well, you know, in the old days, that's the only place that we could go for Latino culture. I remember looking on the Internet and saying, well, where am I going to go see my peoples? Where, where are my peeps today? Well, yeah, nightclubs and churches. Let's not forget churches. <laughs> you know, I want to talk about, a little bit about, you know, uh, the entertainment because, you know, you turn on Latino TV and it's all entertainment. You know, it's, it, it, that's just our culture. We're vibrant, we're colorful, we're very musically, right? And you can't find a Latino that can't dance. You know, let's just, <laughs> that's, how, that's, that's who we are. That's our DNA. And so you'll find a lot of that in latinofresh.com, the nightclubs. And, and, you know, music, you know, Latin America is so huge, right? You've got Mexico and Central America and you have South America and our Caribbean brothers, right? And don't forget the Cubans. Yes, our Caribbean brothers are Cubans, Puerto Ricans, and the Dominicans, right? right. Beautiful, beautiful. And so we try to feature all that music on latinofresh.com, whether you like salsa, Mexican, and Mexican, there's a lot of, you know, you've got Norteño, Banda, and Pop. Yeah, uh, I grew up on rancheras. Oh, you know, rancheras, <laughs> I think all Latin America uh, loves, you know. And, um, you know, rock and Español and salsa, pop. I mean, there's just so many music that you... 
and hey, the hip hop. Hip hop, or what do you call it? Yeah, there's there's so much music that's Latino influence in the Bay Area. Please check out latinofresh.com. Get your dancing, go out to a concert, shake that booty. <laughs> that's right. And for those of you that uh, don't have a, a computer, you can also see latinfresh.com on your mobile device. So remember uh, that you don't have to have a big screen in front of you. You can have a little screen in front of you. Now, Mario, I also wanted to ask you a few more questions. For example, about the topics, the hot topics you're going to be covering on Latin Fresh. And uh, I believe you said that you were going to cover also items on health, items on finance. Uh. Yeah, let's talk about that. So, you know, latinofresh.com is events, it's entertainment and culture. But, you know, again, my mission in life is to empower. Um, so the empowerment is about the slices of your life, right? It's like a pie. You've got health, uh, mental, you've got finance, career, education, relationships. And we hope to empower all those slices of your life on latinofresh.com. Uh, for health example, diabetes is one of the biggest issue in our community. So we hope to find, uh, to, to get a dialogue going there and to find solutions for that. So that's that's our empowerment channel. Um, it's, it's giving you solutions to all the slices of your life. Again, being education, health, mental, um, finance, uh, relationships, et cetera. So we hope to really um, get behind that and, and push that for our Latino community. So we'll be looking at Latino Fresh as our first stop for information. I, I really hope so, Paula. I really hope so. I invite the whole community to check out latinofresh.com, not only for the empowerment issues, but also uh, for events, entertainment, culture. Um, you know, a lot of people love Latino culture as Asian culture, um, European culture, African culture. There's so many beautiful cultures here in the Bay Area. Latino Fresh will just cover, you know, uh, we invite everybody to come check us out. Check out the Latino culture, check out the foods. Yes, uh, let's, let's talk a little bit more about the foods. Now, we do have some wonderful restaurants here. Uh, in fact, I'm going to have one of the chefs from one of the local restaurants, uh, Gallardo's, uh, on the show. And uh, he has, like many other Latino owners of small restaurants in this city, they're facing the commercial rents also going up. Yeah, and I'm glad you're featuring Gallardo's because that's one of my top two Mexican restaurants. Uh, the other is San Jalisco, who's been around for 50 years. Um, Gallardo's is awesome. I mean, if you guys I want... Gallardo's are my favorite. Is it? <laughs> if you guys want real <laughs> Mexican food... Don't go to the burrito places. And as you know, burritos are not Mexican. Stop the madness. Uh, burritos are from Texas. Uh, go to Gallardo's and San Jalisco. Great Mexican food. Um, let's talk about food because that's a lot in our culture. Mexican food, uh, you and I are both of Mexican descent, but, you know, the Bay Area also has, or San Francisco, Central American food, South American food, Caribbean. I mean, all these foods are awesome. Um but how do you how do we start a conversation on Latino uh, culture food? I mean, that's a big well, topic. We may have to start a, a show just for Latino food. We should because, because I really like the uh, nacatamales, Nicaraguan, <laughs> and, oh, and my, that, those are my favorites. The tamale in, in every culture. Perhaps we'll work our way into that. So I just want to thank you for joining us today, watching and listening about Latino Fresh, the latest website. And if you'd like to get some more information on this, Mario, go ahead and do your closing. All right. Uh, we invite everybody to check out beautiful Latino culture in the Bay Area on latinofresh.com. We feature every week 100 events, entertainment, culture, and empowerment. Uh, we would love for your visitors to check out the Latino culture on our website. Um, as you said, you can check it out on mobile. We're mobile-friendly, latinofresh.com. And thank you so much, Paula, for having us. And, and thank you for doing this, uh, uh, what you do for the community. It is my pleasure to have you here, Mario. And remember to watch our show on Channel 29 at 3 o'clock p.m. on Sundays. But also look it up on YouTube and check out our Facebook page. And also the Twitter handle is Paula Fiscal TV. 
And in closing, I want to thank Mario for joining us. And I also want him to talk a little bit about how he's currently seeking interns and volunteers. Thank you for that. Yes, uh, in order to grow, uh, we need fresh ideas, right? LatinoFresh.com. And uh, we want to empower our community, uh, especially the young ones. So we invite uh, people to intern and volunteer uh, with us. Uh, what you'll get is you'll learn marketing, you'll learn business, but mostly you'll be helping out the community that we serve. So you don't have to be Latino, of course, uh, but uh, we do uh, would love for you to come and help out with your ideas on latinofresh.com. Contact us there. You can click the contact button. Thank you very much. Once again, thank you so much for joining the Paula Fiscal Show, keeping you informed. <laughs> Thank you.